The Basque Country, aka Euskadi, is a nation without a state, bounded by the Pyrenees Mountain and the Atlantic Ocean, split between France and Spain. In its biggest city, Bilbao, you can find architectures of both antique and modern with beautiful sceneries. It's got mountains, rivers, coastlines, a stubborn culture, a unique language, and an unparalleled culinary tradition. And speaking of the food, Basque has some of the best and most interesting culinary trade of all Spain. Here you can have the famous pincho that the Basque cuisine is known for. You can also explore some more unique local delicacies. Last but not least, with its nearly 40 Michelin star restaurants, the Basque country is one of the best fine dining destinations in the world. In this travel series, I'll show you my short journey into the Basque country, where I go and what I eat. From unique local delicacies to Michelin star restaurants, through my lens, you can experience the amazing Basque country for yourself. The journey started. I flew to Bilbao from Barcelona. On the way there, I can already notice the greenery all over the region. Upon arrival at the airport, I could immediately feel this was a small and peaceful city with a very relaxing vibe, which I liked a lot. For some reason, my travel buddy booked a very remote place far away from the city center, but at least we got to enjoy the tranquility of the suburb. Dropped our luggage, we headed to the city to start exploring. Haven't eaten anything for that day, we start with searching for a restaurant. But it was kind of an awkward time to eat at around 3 p.m. because the restaurants either had closed or had no yet. But I refused to compromise on fast food. Finally, thanks to my searching abilities, I found this restaurant. From the outside, it looked like a normal grocery storefront. But once you entered, we can see there are dining tables hidden at the back side of the restaurant along with produces and liquors. This will be it. The menu was about traditional bass food, which was exactly what I wanted. Since I pretty much didn't know any of them, I just picked those ones that looked interesting to me. Appetizers. We had this cock crockets and this peppery thing, called pimientos de baix, produced from Guernica. Yeah, that Picasso Guernica. The pepper was slightly burned to let the oil out so to intensify the peppery flavor. Pair it with a little salt. There was also this smoked salmon. I couldn't remember the taste since it's been so long. Then, main course. We had some truly interesting stuff. First one, bacalao al pipil. Salted codfish in a slimy emulsion called the pipi sauce, made with olive oil, garlic, chili, and aromatic infusion. Pipi stands for the sound in the making process as the bubble rising from the sauce. This is a classical bass dish and it had a very special fishy taste in the sauce. Because of the unique flavor, the owner of the restaurant said this might not be everyone's liking, but I certainly liked it. Kind of slimy. Yeah. But I think it's good. Yes. But this is the smell. It's a different 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 smell. It's a we had chipirone and shudinta, literally translated as baby squid cooked in its own ink. It's kind of scary looking. The name sounds a little cute and funny and cruel at the same time. It's like you cook a pig in its own fat, then stew with pig blood. Mm, sounds delicious. Anyways, I absolutely love this dish. Isn't that sexy? It was like you apply a black lipstick after taking a bite. Mm. It had a very unique squiddy seed-like flavor that's hard to describe. Then, moving on to desserts. This one, I don't remember the name. You can think of it as a kind of Basque cheesecake, paired with a cigar-looking pastry called Cigarritos de Tolosa. You guessed it, meaning cigar from Tolosa of Kibushkoa region. And this dessert is called Goshua. In Basque, literally meaning sweets. Also came with a cigar cookie. 
美味しい美味しくもちろんですうん、うん嗯，我不知道这是我演，我没看过。它是描述这个，因为它这个是有鸡蛋在里面的果冻嘛，鸡蛋奶油一点，然后外面是焦糖。嗯嗯嗯嗯，更短。And some coffee to finish. We were very happy with our first meal in the Basque Country. It was now past 4 p.m. and it certainly didn't look like we would have any stomach for dinner, so we decided to skip it entirely. We then wandered around the city to take in the scenery. Bilbao, the once industrial hub of northern Spain, while being the biggest city in the Basque Country, is relatively small compared to other metropolitans. Rather, it is more peaceful. There are greeneries all over the city. The city is sandwiched in between mountains. Split by rivers throughout and peppered with bridges and historical landmarks, it is a truly beautiful place. You could see the Basque flag all over the place, and you also notice their unique language, Basque or Euskara, which is language isolate, believed to be the only surviving pre-Indo-European language. As you can clearly see from the signs, that Euskara had nothing in common with any other languages surrounding it. What you're seeing here is a menu from a Michelin restaurant in three languages. By the way. The Basque Country is populated with Michelin-star restaurants that serve some of the very fine cuisine beyond your imagination. In Bilbao alone, the size smaller than the Manhattan Island, there are 11 Michelin-star restaurants. The Basque Country is the culinary crown of Spain, and that's the all-famous Guggenheim Museum, designed by Frank Gehry. It is the landmark of Bilbao. This is the Guggenheim Museum behind on the bridge. Now you can see the entire. But that's for tomorrow. There are also some antique buildings, such as this one in Flemish style. You can think of Flemish as Belgian Dutch. Notice the windows? None of them are in the same set. This is a city where the old and the new coexist together. Anyways, it's getting late. Better get back to our place to get some rest. Did I mention my travel buddy booked a super remote place? I blame him. Now I'm in the outskirts of Bilbao and trying to get something from the supermarket. Now it's 9 p.m. We need to get a little bit of water、uh, for tomorrow. Okay, we just come back from the supermarket. We get、uh, some some stuff to prepare for breakfast tomorrow. So we have some、uh, pork sausage. This、uh, guajada, it's like a yogurt, like a Spanish yogurt, and some eggs. Um, sparkling water with some milk.、Um, yeah, we've been walking for like almost half an hour to get back here, so I'm、uh, exhausted, and thirsty. All right. Second day, cooking some extremely simple breakfast because of the location. Don't expect to find any restaurants nearby. Off we go. Oh, so here we are at Neuva, and we're going to catch some beer. Let's be happy. Into the city. Since we only had simple breakfast, the first thing we decided to do is to have a proper meal. And I knew the place. Victor Montes is known to serve some of the best pinchos in Bilbao, and we were here to have a feast. Pinchos are the ultimate snacks of the Basque cuisine. You can think of them as the Basque equivalent of tapas, but they are not the same and shouldn't be confused. 
The word pincho comes from the Spanish word pincho, meaning spike. As you can see, there are small slices of bread upon which an ingredient or a mixture of ingredients is placed and truly fastened with a toothpick, or pincho, hence the name. There were so many varieties you don't even know where to start. Let's take this tuna, and this changuro, meaning spider crab, also a Basque delicacy. Mm -hmm. And this bacalao al pipid. Yes, the same one as yesterday's, and it could be made into the pincho. Maybe I could make a mapo tofu version of pincho. Last but not least, got up here with some local Basque beer known as Chorilleri Gargador. It was a bit acidic with a bright tone. Refreshing. And you should try that. With one last pork belly, this was a satisfying meal. Let's move on. We decided to visit the Guggenheim Museum. Maybe a Michelin restaurant after that? Sounds good. Let's go.